members. Good morning. We formed a quorum. Second session of the special finance committee. Uh, the meeting is scheduled from 9 a.m. to 12.25, and we will have three sessions today. Uh, please uh, keep the uh, Zoom uh, video function and show your face throughout the meeting and uh, the microphone will be unmuted under my instruction and please uh, use the virtual background function uh, to choose the color for uh, your constituency. The purpose of the meeting is to consider draft estimates 2022-23 by the administration to ensure that the money sought will not uh, exceed what is required for implementing the relevant policies. May I remind members that questions must be directly related to the um, expanded draft exam expenditure and please quote the reply series serial number on the top right hand corner of um, the paper and if um, the administration cannot uh, provide any answer please uh, provide a supplementary reply in writing for uh, forwarding to the secretariat and I will uh, determine the speaking time of each member depending on uh, the members waiting to speak. Uh, to be fair, please um, clear the raise hand function on Zoom for all members. Will members who intend to speak uh, use the raise hand feature of Zoom to indicate your wish? Let me welcome uh, the Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury and his team to answer members related to uh, Financial Services Bureau. Secretary, opening remarks, please. Secretary, you're not coming through yet. Thank you. Chairman and members, good morning. I will briefly introduce the estimates of expenditure for financial services and our key areas of work in the coming year. Now for estimates of expenditure, the allocation to the financial services branch and departments under its purview for 2022-23 is about 2.1 billion. And this represents a reduction of about $0.27 billion over the revised estimate of last year. In the coming year, we have uh, to uh, focus on safeguarding Hong Kong's financial stability. And on the other hand, continue to enhance financial cooperation of the mainland by introducing a series of new initiatives for promoting market development, having regard to the national 14th five-year plan, so as to enhance Hong Kong's status as an international financial center. Uh, with regard to safeguarding our financial stability with our resilient regulatory regime, robust risk management measures, and ample foreign exchange reserves, Hong Kong's financial system has demonstrated resilience despite the impact of COVID-19, uh, geopolitical tensions, as well as a wide range of global uncertainties over the past two years or so. The linked exchange rate system and various facets of the markets have been functioning in an orderly manner without any abnormal signs of capital flow. We we'll continue to strive to maintain financial stability for Hong Kong. There are three major areas on promoting market development. First, we will assess the industry in seizing new opportunities in the financial market. On FinTech, to encourage the financial industry to innovate, we launched the FinTech Proof of Concept Subsidy Scheme last year, which has received overwhelming response from the industry. We propose allocating another 10 billion dollars for launching a new round of the scheme this year and expand the scope of eligibility for receiving subsidy. We also strive to provide a one-step platform for the industry to conduct trial of cross-boundary fintech projects concurrently in the mainland and Hong Kong and explore expanding the function of commercial data interchange. On green and sustainable finance, the government will continue to issue green bonds totaling about 4.5 US billion dollars or equivalent this year and will lower the minimum loan size threshold from 200 million dollars to 100 million dollars in respect of applications for subsidies for covering external review costs under the green and sustainable finance grant scheme launched last year on manpower training nurturing and building up Hong Kong's manpower reserve is pivotal to seizing the above two new opportunities on fintech on green and sustainable finance. In this regard, we'll launch several schemes to provide subsidies for training and attaining relevant professional qualifications. The second front is exploring further development while consolidating the existing advantages. 
on securities market, the reform to the listing regime in 2018 has brought about significant increase in market capitalization and trading volume in the Hong Kong securities market over the past few years. We'll continue to enhance the listing mechanism and strive the balance between regulation and market development. Hong Kong X implemented a series of measures in January this year to enhance listing of overseas enterprises with a view to welcoming the return of China concept stocks. Meanwhile, Hong Kong X also launched a new listing route for special purpose acquisition companies. As a next step, we will examine the revision of listing requirements to meet the fundraising needs of large scale advanced technology enterprises, which will require sustained substantial capital for research and development, but are currently not qualified for listing without the required profit and trading record or furthering developing Hong Kong into a deeper and broader fundraising platform. We'll also implement the mutual access of exchange traded funds as soon as possible and enhance explore more risk management products. We'll progressively implement the recommendations of the steering committee on bond market development in Hong Kong for the enhance the function of the central market money markets unit and explore the development of an electronic bond trading platform. We will issue no less than $15 billion of I bond, $35 billion of silver bond and $10 billion of retail green bond this year. The Hong Kong Mortgage Corporation Limited is expected to offer infrastructure, financial security, authorization products with a total value of 450 million US dollars in this financial year to institutional investors. For asset and wealth management, we have proposed to provide tax concession for eligible family investment management entities managed by single family offices. We are consulting the industry on the detailed proposal. On uh, the EMPF platform, it enters the critical building spirit uh, stage this year. Despite the mega scale and complexity of the project, we'll work with the Mandatory Profit and Fund Schemes Authority and the EMPF Platform Company Limited to continue to take forward the project in full steam and strive to complete the project and schedule so as to create room for fee reduction to scheme members as soon as possible. The third major front on promoting market development is to strengthen the function as the offshore Roman B business hub and strive to enhance the offshore Roman B business ecosystem in Hong Kong. As regards allowing stocks traded via the southbound trading of Stock Connect to be denominated in RMB, the working group has completed a feasibility study. The next step is to discuss with the regulatory authorities and relevant organizations in mainland in this regard, what the EX will be in touch with issues and relevant sectors. The government is also prepared to roll out supporting measures such as waiving the stock duty on stock transfers paid by market makers in the transaction so as to increase market liquidity and facilitate trading. On enriching the spectrum of renminbi financial products, the Shenzhen Municipal People's Government issued offshore renminbi municipal government bonds totaling 5 billion renminbi in Hong Kong, including green bonds. This is the first time a municipal government, people's government issues bonds in Hong Kong. Riding on this successful issuance, we'll continue to encourage more diversified renminbi wealth management products and bonds to be issued in Hong Kong, thereby promoting the internationalization of renminbi. Finally, in view of the impacts of the latest wave of the pandemic in various sectors and the labor market, We've extended for one year the application period for the 100% personal loan guarantee scheme introduced last year and implemented new enhancement measures for the PLGS. My colleagues and I will be happy to answer questions from members. Thank you. I'll read out the order. Chen Zhong Le, Lai Tong Kuo Lim Chi Yun, Chen Zhen Yang Tai Mok Han, Priscilla Leung, Yao Tak Ken, and uh, also Li Wen Yan and Tang Ka Biu. Wang Yun San. And Paul Yongman. Four minutes each. May I remind you that to allow as many members to ask questions as possible, four minutes will include questions and answers, including uh, replies from officials. And when uh, time is almost up, I hope officials can uh, round up their reply within a few seconds. Uh, Mr. Rock Chen, four minutes. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to follow up. Uh, on reply 018 and 019. I'm pleased to hear from the administration that close to um, two million, uh, $2 billion in a green I bond will be issued and accept by the administration. Uh, no less than $35 billion of green bonds will be issued this year with uh, uh, interest hikes by a Fed Reserve. 
I'd like to know whether in the retail green bond to be issued uh, will uh, be the um, guaranteed interest be increased. And the second question is uh, related to reply 019. The administration says that it will continue to grasp the enormous green finance opportunities presented by the Greater Bay Area Development and uh, also to uh, provide subsidy for enterprises uh, to issue green and sustainable uh, bonds in Hong Kong and uh, to uh, lower the subsidy of um, from $200 million to $100 million uh, to uh, cover the external review costs. I'd like to know the number of such enterprises who have made use of the scheme and how the government will attract more relevant institutions to come to Hong Kong to start their business so that we can have a more complete uh, retail green bond ecosystem in Hong Kong. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chen, for your question. Uh, regarding uh, the uh, pricing, it depends on the market. Not long ago, we uh, intended to launch a retail green bond, but because of the pandemic, we have uh, deferred the program and we have readjusted the interest. While well, I cannot guarantee whether the uh, dividend will be high or the yield will be high, it depends on the market. As regards uh, the retail green bond program, uh, the uh, Hong Kong MA has received a lot of applications and perhaps I can uh, defer to the MPFA to supplement. Thank you, uh, Chair. Regarding a retail green bond, very soon we will have the first issuance of retail green bond. For promotion in this regard, we are working on two fronts. Uh, first, uh, the government uh, will continue to issue green bonds, and we have in total issued more than uh, $7 billion US, dollar, US dollars of uh, green bond. Uh, this is very uh, useful in building up a yield for green bonds in Hong Kong. And the second thing is how to expand the market. We are working on a few areas. As said by Mr. Rockshan and also uh, the Secretary, we have got a subsidy scheme uh, which started in May last year. Uh, the Green and Sustainable Finance Grants scheme will last for three years. As of February this year, we have approved over 50 applications. And the amount of subsidies uh, is about uh, $65 million. It's quite uh, obvious that with the grant scheme, the interest uh, for issuing green bonds is not just uh, green bonds, uh, but application for green loans from banks have seen growth. For green bonds issued last year and green financing from banks last year uh, grew by fourfold compared with the year before last. So you can see how useful uh, the grant scheme has been. Perhaps I pause here first. All right, Mr. Lai Tong Kwok. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my question is FSTB 049, and uh, that is the SME uh, financing scheme. Under the scheme, uh, the uh, SMEs can uh, apply uh, for 80-90% and uh, the uh, interest rate is 3.75 to 0.74. That is the bad debt rate is much lower uh, than uh, other schemes, uh, which could be up to 20%. So this has been very helpful. I don't know whether the secretary has noted that a few days ago, uh, there was a feature, a TV feature, that has, there are intermediaries in society saying that they can help people to make use of the SME financing guarantee scheme to take out loans for other investment or even for buying properties. I'd like to know how the administration can prevent successful borrowers. They are SMEs. How can you ensure that the money they borrow 
is mainly for the business operation and not for other investment. Because uh, if uh, their investment uh, is lost, then the government will have to underwrite the loans. Secretary, uh, thank you for your question. You're correct, Mr. Lai. We hope that during the pandemic, we'll be able to support or assist our enterprises. But uh, for any deviations, uh, we have been working hard towards this end. I'd like to defer to Mr. Lee. Uh, from the Hong Kong Mortgage Corporation Limited to take this question. The design of the SME financing guarantee scheme has measures to ensure that the money will be used for the SMEs they must show their eligibility and that their business has been affected by the pandemic before they can borrow any money. The banks will also adopt their professionalism in vetting such applications. When the applications reach us, uh, we will also uh, conduct due diligence. There are also uh, measures in which we need the SMEs to provide personal guarantee. Let's say if they invest the money elsewhere, any losses incurred will be uh, borne by the SMEs. Uh, therefore, it actually has a deterrent effect. I have to remind applicants that you do not need any intermediaries in applying for the scheme. We have seen situations in which intermediaries take profit uh, by applying for the SMEs. So we have to once again reiterate that there's no use to go through intermediaries in application. Well, I hope that you'll be able to make this public or at least to advertise it so people will know. Well, I didn't hear very clearly your question. Can we allow Mr. Lai to repeat the question? Chairman, I really hope that the administration will, based on his response, to clarify this publicly and to point out to um, SMEs not to believe in these intermediaries. All right, I'm sure they will do that. Next, Professor Nelson Lim. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Secretary. I wish you all good health. Well, I have a couple of questions in response to my question, which is FSTB FS023 to 025 in relation to the China stock, uh, China concept stock. And you have already explained to us a, a listing and secondary listing. And I see that there have been some um, uh, public information on that. And we can see that there are many China concept stocks are coming into Hong Kong. And we see that they now choose to return So for the dual primary listing, I want to see whether the secretaries and futures commission will follow up because I see that I just want to look at the numbers to see the numbers for secondary listing. And then in the bond market with the government consider on how we can realize the advantage of Hong Kong's RMB market. And so that we'll be able to have a better asset management. And in relation to uh, training for banks, I would like to know the 1,500 uh, vacancies that you have talked about. I'm not sure 
uh, the number of, fin of uh, uh, financial practitioners are. Can you actually tell us more about the 1,500 places that are to be offered? Thank you for your questions. On secondary listing or uh, dual primary, all along uh, we have had many presidents. Therefore, it is not something new to our market. Uh, sec whether it's secondary or dual primary, we do have our criteria and our mechanism. Therefore, rest assured that we do have the capacity to take in these companies. Professor Lam is correct. The bond market will be huge in the future. There would be many green bonds, and therefore the government is also working hard on that and also on the bond connect with a southbound a trading it has been very helpful to the market and therefore we are leveraging on this in our future development the financial secretary is leading a steering committee including stakeholders in the industry to try to set up a strategy for our future development. The report is not yet announced or published. We are still in the preparation period, uh, but we are in a very advanced preparation stage. I, I hope to hear more from Professor Lem and other legislative counselors on this end. On the uh, plans uh, from the bank, I will defer to Selena. Thank you. The pilot scheme on training subsidy for fintech practitioners uh, began in the banking industry. Uh, we are looking into reimbursement of 80% of tuition fees. Well, based on our previous experience, we estimate that uh, the, the number of spaces offered will be around 1,500 from 1,300. But of course, uh, we could review this along the way. Our preliminary plan is to offer 1,500 spaces. Thank you. Next, Mr. Chen Zhenying. Thank you, Chairman. Well, in order to uh, strengthen our financial positioning, uh, we must enhance our confidence in our market and to attract more uh, overseas uh, talents or outside talents. So I would be speaking in relation to FSTPFS 055, 046 and 014. Well, uh, we do not have enough activities right now. Well, other than the activities uh, listed out by the secretary, do you have any plans uh, to visit other other countries? Well, because actually the uh, Financial Services Development Council plays a very important role. Would you also um, lead delegations uh, for visits elsewhere? In the meeting a couple of days ago, uh, we did discuss that uh, on uh, talents. In reply serial number 046, uh, we have seen uh, many uh, subventions uh, for schools. So there are many new programs, but uh, do we really see a huge number of these uh, students after graduation to really to join the financial market? Because it's very important. The permanent secretary has just now told us that uh, the places offered per year uh, for a pilot program is 1,500. For the financial practitioners who join uh, such programs, how many of them really do join the industry after they complete the program? All right, let me try to reply to the first question. Uh, you are correct, we must continue uh, to promote ourselves. The FSDC is very clear about the framework and there are many uh, talents and elites in the industry. We are working on it from various channels. Uh, we do have ETO overseas and I myself uh, during the pandemic would uh, liaise with them 
uh, on Zoom to hold activities online. Well, we uh, see that a virtual asset is of interest. We see many European uh, companies that are interested in that. And I would like to thank members for uh, supporting our proposal. And second, on tax concessions. Uh, we have worked on some uh, private equity funds and there would also be tax concessions for family uh, management offices because we see that uh, many of them have talked about the uh, family investment management entities that we do provide a very good tax concession. So we'd like members to help us uh, promote that. We not only need to promote it overseas, we also have to promote it on the mainland. Therefore, we would take a multi-pronged approach to work on that. And uh, Mr. Chen, I'm very happy to work with you on that. In relation to the effectiveness of our work, I'd like uh, Selena to follow up on that. Thank you. Well, it is really uh, very popular and it can attract um, financial practitioners to join our programs. We also welcome those who are not in the industry to join. We are also going to discuss this further in, uh, in the panel in around May. Next, Dr. Ten Yuehong. Dr. Ten, please turn on your microphone. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Secretary. I'd like to follow up on FSTB FS045. There are three points I'd like to raise. First, in May of 2021, a three-year green and sustainable finance grant scheme was introduced. Estimated funding was 255 million. As of February this year, uh, approved 50 applications, uh, reaching 65 million. Well, how many applications have you approved as of today? Because I do not see a very obvious uh, result. We do not see a very popular response from the market. It doesn't seem to be too popular. What is the reason for that? Secondly, So uh, you're also reducing the loan size from 200 million to 100 mi uh, million. So what is the market response? And thirdly, uh, we see that uh, there is actually no, no difference between a loan and also the and also the subsidy. So if the cap is at uh, 0.8 million, so it seems not to be too significant and it wouldn't really affect, I mean, it wouldn't really attract um, issuers to issue green bonds in Hong Kong. Thank you for your question. Well, on your three questions, I would like Selena to answer these questions. Thank you, Dr. Ten. On the Green and Sustainable Finance Grant Scheme, you were correct. From February till today, as of April 8th, uh, we have seen an increase in the number of applications. There are around 70 odd applications and we have approved around 65 million in subsidies. Each application um, is on average about uh, 1.1 million. Although the pay seems to be slow, uh, this actually is quite a popular scheme. 
on the uh, 800,000 cap. So the scheme would subsidize the um, full cost of eligible expenses per bond issuance or loan. Although we haven't adjusted the cap. Uh, we have received inquiries about the application procedures for loans at below 200 million, and we have now lowered it to 100 million so that more SMEs will be able to apply. We can and we will maintain regular contact with the industry to see how we can improve the scheme. Priscilla Blau. Well, since uh, Dr. Leung is not here, uh, Mr. Chiu Tarkan. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask about uh, repair number 020, my own. Uh, question is proof of concept. I think uh, this is a very innovative scheme. 160 applications have been received, but uh, only uh, 93 have been approved and it's less than 60%. And i like to know, uh, Dr. Priscilla Lang, can you please uh, unmute your microphone first? Uh, you come next, Mr. Chiu. Thank you. I'd like to... Uh, uh, no, the reason for the uh, low success rate is it because uh, uh, the administration doesn't understand the uh, sector or was it because of a lack of uh, publicity? Now, 93 projects have been successful. I'd like to know how many of them are from, our, from the academia, how many from the industry and how many from uh, R&D institutions. Among the 93 projects approved, uh, I'd like to know how many of them have become um, real uh, projects, how many have uh, received uh, orders. Now, it's mentioned that the next round of uh, the scheme will have some enhancements. Have you ever consulted the sector to enhance our uh, FinTech infrastructure? I think this is a very good scheme. Now you have uh, increased uh, $10 million uh, to the whole scheme. I'd like to know uh, when you will further raise the subsidy. Thank you. Uh, let me share with you our recent experience uh, with the uh, proof of concept uh, project, and then uh, that can be supplemented afterwards. Now, 93 projects have been approved, ranging from wealth tech, rec tech, insert tech, and payments, and also uh, cross boundary data analysis. Now, uh, uh, for uh, cross-boundary uh, projects, uh, including GBA, yes, they have been uh, supported. And the reasons for rejecting the applications, because uh, many of uh, the applications are quite, uh, of quite um, good, but then because of uh, the uh, ceiling uh, in our funding, they have been uh, rejected. So therefore we have um, injected further money into the scheme. As regards our public uh, publicity and also consultation with the industry, well, uh, the cyber port and the administration have been promoting the scheme as regards how the projects can be sustainable and commercialized. Now, uh, once uh, a project is included in the uh, proof of concept uh, scheme, they are already halfway to success. According to many finance companies, now they said that without the scheme, it's hard for them uh, to uh, go into financial institutions because of um, many illegal constraints. Now they are not too worried about the money they can receive. Rather, they like the um, trademark of uh, proof of concept scheme. So we are going to launch an enhanced version. Hopefully we can help the sector even more. Ms. Yen, 
Well, uh, the project has been a success. We have already exhausted our funding of $10 million. So it's a very good experience. I think it's also very encouraging to the industry. So after the first round, we believe in the second round of the scheme, we're going to approve a more, um, a, high, a bigger diversity of projects. What about the percentage of commercialization? Now we don't have such data yet, but as I said, in May and June, we are going to give a full account to the panel and we'll provide the relevant figures afterwards. Dr. Priscilla Leung. Dr. Priscilla Leung. Then we'll skip her first. Uh, Mr. Johnny, Dr. Johnny. Mm. Thank you. I'd like to follow up on my own question. 043 and also 015, a question by another member. My question is about uh, the GBA investment fund. I asked about uh, the um, strategy and according to the reply, it will enhance Hong Kong's competitiveness. Uh, will you, uh, what, uh, at what stage of development will you consider when it comes to uh, enterprises you're going to invest in. Can you give us details? And the second question is about uh, family offices. I'd like to know whether in terms of STEM duty, now if Hong Kong family offices own overseas assets, can they uh, be waived or be they given a stamp duty concession in transactions to encourage more families uh, to come to Hong Kong so that we can uh, be a center of uh, overseas assets? Thank you. First, uh, investment of uh, the GBA investment fund. Well, we have a three tier uh, structure. The first uh, is uh, chaired by the financial secretary uh, that is under the Hong Kong growth portfolio. It will work on uh, the framework and the uh, requirements. Uh, the second tier is uh, the investment committee chaired by myself, responsible for uh, Selecting general partners, GP, because uh, we want to have uh, this at arm's length arrangement so that the government will not uh, be directly involved in the choice of uh, enterprises or sectors. So the third tier involves the Hong Kong MA, which is experienced in investment in private equity funds. So uh, the uh, Hong Kong MA will help us to uh, first uh, list out, uh, screen out some GP, and then uh, for my committee to choose. So uh, the GBA investment fund uh, will have a similar arrangement in the selection of GPs. You asked about the uh, projects we are going to invest in. Now in our discussion, it's very clear that at the government's level, we do not just look for financial return. We want a strategic returns as well because uh, we are spending more than $20 billion and we want uh, the scope to be wider. We want to invest in projects with a Hong Kong nexus. So when the investment committee makes a decision, it would require prospective projects to explain to us uh, their undertaking, their commitments, and how they can uh, ensure that their investment in projects has a Hong Kong nexus. For instance, will these uh, enterprises uh, be based in Hong Kong or uh, engage in uh, businesses related to Hong Kong?
with regard to uh, stamp duty concessions, or perhaps uh, because of time constraints, we'll discuss uh, this after the meeting. Uh, Mr. Li Wei Wang, Mr. Robert Lee. Thank you, Chair. I've got two questions. FSTB 031 and FSTB 037. Uh, is about uh, the Wealth Management Connect scheme and also uh, securitization of uh, bonds. Now, we want uh, more products to be included under the Wealth Management Connect scheme. According to the administration's reply, uh, regulators of three aspects will be involved. I do understand the challenges and considerations, but I'd like to have a timetable. I'd like to know uh, whether any meeting has been held, uh, any concrete plan to promote the development of here. And uh, also uh, the um, retail uh, development of bonds. I understand that this is in line with uh, the sector's view. We have talked about um, developing uh, uh, bonds available for retail investors. There are only 61 bonds available for retail investors, and the total amount is about 130 odd billion Hong Kong dollars. When members of the public have a greater demand for um, regular returns in investment, can you give us more information how you can ensure? more retail investors uh, can uh, invest in bonds. Thank you very much for your question. First uh, on Wealth Management Connect scheme and the second is on uh, developing the uh, bond, a uh, retail bond market. As I said, under the uh, FS, uh, there is a steering committee in mapping out the future direction for us. Now we are going to issue retail green bonds very soon. We should not just develop the market, but we have to ensure that uh, the sector can develop their business. We believe uh, the uh, retail green bond issuance will benefit the sector as well. Well, as regards um, bond market development, I think that there can be various uh, ways and means to uh, achieve this. We should allow members of the public to take part in bond investment. Selena once came to the uh, panel to explain how uh, MPF schemes have relaxed so that um, we, we have already relaxed uh, the um, regulations on investment in uh, products under MPF so that after due risk assessment, investors can then decide whether to invest in bond. Because our population is aging, we want products uh, with fixed income. Uh, we will do that in Hong Kong and we'll, we'll also um, uh, work with other markets to do that. And the other question is a WMC, Wealth Management Connects Scheme. We are, have made a steady start and we are now progressing smoothly. The important thing is uh, whether there can be more participants. Perhaps Hong Kong MA can supplement. Hong Kong MA. Yes, we are doing that. We understand. Uh, Mr. Lee's question, uh, participation uh, by the security sector. We have a lot of products. And then uh, uh, we uh, have uh, designed the system together with the mainland. We understand the aspirations of uh, the sector. We will see uh, whether we can explore more channels and allow uh, security uh, brokers and dealers to take part. Uh, this is a consensus in society, and we will uh, put this request uh, to the mainland afterwards. Mr. Yim Kong, thank you, Chairman. Good morning, Secretary. 
uh, like to ask about FSTP FS058 and 034. I'd like to follow up on two questions. According to uh, figures, give that we can see that the average family income in Hong Kong is uh, 35,100. And uh, drawing reference from OECD's definition, middle-class families account for about 40% of all households in Hong Kong and actually um, contribute hugely to the uh, tax uh, pay in Hong Kong. But then during the pandemic, uh, many uh, families have been receiving uh, less salary and they're actually uh, spending more than what they earn. However, the government has not uh, come up with enough measures to assist uh, these um, mi middle class families uh, to ride out the pandemic. So do you have more targeted measures to help them, uh, such as uh, providing them with a higher tax concession uh, for dependent parents and families? The government and focuses on attracting talent into Hong Kong, um, uh, tech talent and other talents, and that actually also contribute hugely to Hong Kong society. However, because uh, many of them are not permanent residents and therefore they are not able to receive a uh, consumption voucher from the administration. Uh, these uh, talents uh, need to pay rent and they cannot uh, reunite with their families. I believe that during the pandemic, uh, we should provide more care for these uh, talents who are unable to return to their own homes because that will attract more talents to come to work in Hong Kong after the pandemic. I hope that the FS will really uh, look into who you're covering in your assistance and to also allow these to receive the subsidies given by the government during the pandemic, even though they're not permanent residents. Secretary, thank you, Mr. Im. Well, this might involve arrangements on consumption vouchers. We're going to have um, officers to specifically talk about this later. So let me first answer this question in a general manner first. Uh, we actually do attach huge importance uh, to the middle class because they're a very important group. And under the pandemic, they, together with other people as well, are also facing many financial difficulties. Well, you mentioned the consumption vouchers and that to be eligible, you must be a permanent resident. However, for many other schemes, uh, uh, such as uh, salaries, tax, uh, concession, and also, uh, each household receiving electric bill subsidy. These are also measures to help people ride out the pandemic. We try to come up with strategies to support everyone. It's just that um, you benefit from different schemes. On the consumption voucher, we can talk about this in detail at a later time. Next, Mr. Bill Tang. Thank you, Chairman. My question is in relation to FSTP FS005 on tax uh, concession uh, to uh, go for annuity. We're talking about 12 billion involving uh, 270,000 people. And the, we're talking about, uh, about uh, 6 billion on the uh, voluntary contribution. I am 
very concerned with retirement protection. The MPFA has been doing quite well with the EMPF pl platform, and we know the fees of the 400 MPFs, and we know exactly whether they are a three-year tenor, five-year tenor, or a seven-year tenor, and all the risks. Then for the annuity premium tax deduction scheme is actually not very transparent. It's very difficult to compare because there is no one consistent platform to make a comparison. Would you uh, set up also a information platform for the annuity premium so that the public will know exactly the expenses and the fees because many private annuity premium is only 1% to 3%. I hope that the secretary will be able to address my question. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Tang. I'd like to thank Mr. Tang for providing us with many views on our uh, platform, on our e-platform, so that we'll be able to optimize the platform for the public. We want uh, beneficiaries and also employees to be able to make a comparison on which scheme they would go for to make it more transparent so that they would be make a better informed decision. The, well, actually, uh, we do need to make a certain uh, disclosure, for example, to give information on the uh, deduction arrangement, the percentage, or do we really need a platform? I think that this can some this is something we can discuss in the next step. Currently, we need to try to clarify all the unclear uh, understandings of the arrangement. And Mr. Tang, we can follow up on this after the meeting to see where we can make improvements. Uh, members of the public, well, even me, uh, know that uh, we are not looking for a high number of products. We actually need to have a better understanding of each product instead. Uh, we will follow up later. Our chairman, I hope that you will understand that, well, yes, um, you actually uh, receive less uh, of 2.3 billion. Well, I'm sure that the secretary has heard your views. Mr. Edmund Wong. Thank you, Chairman. Secretary, I'd like to ask about FSTPFS050 on my own question. So I want to ask about the um, fees um, after the Hong Kong Institute of Certified Public Accountants to the FRC of the powers of issuance of certificates and registration. So the government has committed to exempt these fees in the first year of implementation. And in order to go for this new arrangement, the administration has actually um, allocated uh, 400 million and that there's also uh, for this reform. So right now, um, the additional operating expenditure is around 56.24 million. So when the seed capital see a surplus, why can you not provide a subsidy for an extra two years? The next question is on 051 on participating in the uh, GBA to in further participation of accounting profession and auditors. 
So the sector has been discussing with the FSTB and also the Financial Reporting Council to try to attract more talents into the area. And this is on par with my question. In the administration's response, it is mentioned that there are many different measures uh, such as um, exemptions under SEPA, and there are 1,800 applications, but then due to various reasons, um, there are only a few hundred um, professionals that are qualified to work on the mainland. And so that can not effectively support the industry. So I'd like to ask if there are any plans to promote further pro participation of the accounting profession auditors in the development. Thank you, Mr. Wong, for your questions. Well, this is actually a common goal to uh, try to enhance the um, accounting profession. Uh, Mr. Wong has always been interested in this, but then we also need to look into the regulatory regime. Uh, we cannot only look at one number and say that there are still around uh, 200 million reserves and that's enough. We need to look into whether there's sustainability in our regulations. I hope that you will all support what we are doing, that the fees will be made based on 2021. And I hope that I'll be able to have member support and that you would understand where we're coming from. And GBA development on how we can better uh, promote the industry we are continuously working on uh, facilitating our uh, accounting profession north. So uh, we have been talking with consultants and stakeholders um, uh, with the Ministry of Finance, but as to how we can help them in a concrete manner, well, we are starting from Tianhai and we hope that by taking it step by step, we'll be able to um, have a larger coverage um, on the mainland. And we're going to work with members to improve this. Dr. Wang yun -san, thank you. I'd like to follow up on FSTB FS056, my own question on the carbon market opportunities on the uh, fintech market. On the carbon market, I understand that the steering committee has already set out a paper uh, with four main areas of development. So it is said that you're looking into the um, best initiatives. Uh, we were going to discuss this in the panel, but we're we don't have a timeline yet. I wanted to ask the steering committee uh, whether a timetable is in place. Secondly, I'd like to further understand um, the second direction in going for a unified carbon market with the mainland. Is there any particular industry? Because according to my understanding, the Hong Kong electric companies already have a fuel mix uh, monitoring and regulation. Uh, therefore, they may not want to participate in this carbon market. Also, a quick question on FinTech on the uh, working with a blockchain with the People's Bank of China and the HKMA. Would this trade finance blockchain platform also work together with the um, POB digital 
a commercial uh, a digital currency because if we are also able to work with the CBDC, then uh, that would be more effective. Secretary, thank you, Chair. I will take the first question and for the second, I will ask the Hong Kong MA to supplement on a unified carbon market. Well, we are now uh, arranging for a time to brief the panel on this. I think uh, Mr. Wong is correct. Why do we have uh, to uh, look to GB after Hong Kong's market is too small and to, uh, uh, to vitalize a market, there must be scale of economy. In particular, a carbon uh, exchange involves a long-term carbon credits trading. We need a big market. And uh, Hong Kong has a small economy, uh, but then our uh, capitalization of uh, the stock market is a uh, um, dozen uh, times of our economy. We're able to do that because we enjoy advantages in regulation and uh, also uh, capital from the mainland and uh, the world. So we must um, tap into the GBA market. Uh, for details, we can uh, exchange views with members at the uh, FA panel. We need to uh, involve more participants and projects. As regards uh, trading, uh, can Hong Kong MA supplement? Hong Kong MA? Uh, Dr. Wong? asked uh, whether uh, this uh, financing market will consider digital currency. Now we are now uh, working on a multi-currency uh, bridge. We will study that. We'll see whether we can provide more information to encourage uh, the flow of capital um, across boundaries. We'll consider that. Dr. Wendy Ho, thank you, Chair. I'll let you flop on a question or reply 022. Regarding uh, the future fund and also the growth portfolio for Hong Kong, I have high expectations for them. I hope they can uh, help to promote diversification in our economy. I, I hope it will be a tool made by the government. I have a few suggestions for the secretary. First, uh, on investment of the Hong Kong growth portfolio, we should not just invest in high-end and high-tech projects because uh, this is not uh, something uh, accessible to general members of the public who we should consider uh, projects of uh, high with commercial benefits. They can uh, promote employment around uh, for the middle class and uh, can also benefit our younger generation. And as for the GBA investment fund, well, Hong Kong has always been the uh, greatest source of investment in the mainland. We have never uh, stopped our investment in GBA on various fronts. We have to understand that Hong Kong is part of uh, the GBA and so Hong Kong should not be excluded from investment of the GBA investment fund. We can invest in enterprises in Hong Kong and we can also encourage high uh, INT industries uh, such as uh, Huawei uh, to uh, come to operate in Hong Kong. The future fund is of a larger scale we can uh, invest in overseas companies. We can also require such companies to set up offices in Hong Kong so that we can bring back industries to Hong Kong. Hong Kong MA can, be, uh, can do the first round selection of GPs. I hope the uh, fund can help the administration uh, to uh, adjust uh, 
is uh, philosophy in governance. So uh, Hong Kong can be a growth area. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hong, for your views. I think we have many uh, points in common. Uh, Dr. Hong referred to a few areas, including how we can ensure that such investment will not just bring us financial return, but uh, other externalities and also social benefits. In fact, uh, this is uh, why uh, we have uh, this requirement for a Hong Kong nexus, which is a very uh, broad. In choosing GPs, as I said, we have to consider uh, the uh, commitment for Hong Kong and how we can uh, evaluate the benefits afterwards. These benefits can cover a few areas. As mentioned uh, by Dr. Ho, the number of uh, employees, how they use Hong Kong as a platform, and whether their core functions of business are placed in Hong Kong, these can be our considerations in making an investment choice. So we will uh, consider Dr. Hong's suggestions to see how this $5 billion uh, can be well used under our Hong Kong growth portfolio under the Future Fund. Uh, can the administration uh, be more involved in the investment by GPs to promote economic development in Hong Kong? I think Dr. Hong is among uh, uh, many views received by us and in making a decision, in making investment decisions, we want to be at arm's length and that's why we need to employ GPs. Now, if uh, how uh, we can uh, do it uh, outside uh, this framework, I think we can exchange views of Dr. Ho later. Uh, Dr. Ho, uh, Mr. Holden Chow, the last speaker. Thank you, Chair. Am I coming through? Yes. Thank you. I'd like to follow up on reply serial number FSTB049. This is about the 100% uh, loan guarantee. The SME financing guarantee scheme. Now, and also the 100% loan guarantee for individuals scheme. I think uh, Mr. Lai made a very good point and I hope the administration can step up enforcement. Now for the 100% loan guarantee for individuals schemes, I'm sure uh, it's useful in helping SMEs uh, to uh, tie over the difficult period given the um, pandemic, but then there are unscrupulous intermediaries urging people to apply for loans and afterwards use the money for other purposes, uh, not for supporting their businesses, but uh, for um, buying property, etc. I think uh, there is a certain degree of fraud here. Last year, the administration carried out a major enforcement operation. A uh, few arrests were made. A syndicate uh, was involved in setting up such a uh, fraud and then uh, people were arrested. Hope the administration will continue to step up enforcement because uh, these unscrupulous intermediaries are still doing this. And of course, uh, there are uh, black sheep or uh, SMEs that genuinely take our money to uh, help their own uh, businesses. That's okay. But if uh, there are bad apples who use these loans to uh, buy properties, for instance, there must be a mechanism to um, take enforcement and let the public know to enhance the deterrent effect these bad apples and also unscrupulous intermediaries uh, should be punished. Otherwise, for those who genuinely need the money uh, to salvage their own businesses, for those law-abiding businessmen, well, it's really unfair. I hope the administration can respond in this regard. Thank you. Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chow. I think uh, Mr. Chow and Mr. Lai Tong Kwong are consistent 
in uh, ensuring us that the uh, money can really help uh, people we want to help. Now, uh, as a preventive measure, we can publicize the uh, purpose of the scheme as said by Mr. Lee from Hong Kong MA. They're going to step up publicity and how can we ensure that the loans take out uh, will be spent on the uh, intended purpose? Yes, we will uh, ensure this. And if uh, there is any fraudulent practices, we will take very strict enforcement to ensure that people will not uh, suffer as a result of uh, some unscrupulous elements. So we will gatekeep properly to ensure that the scheme can achieve its desired purpose. Just one more sentence. I think we should uh, do regular samplings. I'm sure you have uh, intelligence if uh, you spot abnormalities. I think you should uh, investigate. Thank you. Any supplements from the sector? Yes, we'll follow up afterwards. Now, uh, this session ends here. Please come back at 10.20 for the next session. Thank you.